Okay, so I just got this in. It's a PIP uh, 24-24-24 LV-MSD. It's a 2.4 kilowatt, um, 24 volt DC, all-in-one inverter uh, for 120 line. And the thing I like about this is you can stack six of these units together to get 14 kilowatt units. Um, comes with the cables. Comes with the software. I heard there's some better software, so I'll have to search for that. Some mounting brackets and the uh, cables for communications and other stuff. So, okay, so let's talk about the difference between parallel and series. Now, in this unit that I've got for the MPP Solar All in One, it can take anywhere from 30 to 80 volts input. I have 12 volt panels. So, realistically, they go from about raw voltage going in, DC voltage going in, about 17 volts. So, two of them in series would probably be enough to actually drive this unit. However, I'd be smarter to run four of them together, effectively pushing up the voltage to around 80 volts. And here's the reason why. When you run stuff in series on panels, let's take this example right here. These are 20 volt panels at 5 amps. So when you run them in series, all you do is you connect the negative to the positive and you run the negative lead from this side over to there and the positive over there. You effectively double the voltage of 40 volts, but it stays at 5 amps. Now why is this important drop? Because the reason why is because the higher the amperage you go on a, a DC on a cable with voltage DC, the bigger the wire has to be. So if I can increase the voltage without increasing the current, I can stay at a relatively smaller wire. Now, for instance, if we look at this right here, this is how solar panels are wired in parallel. So basically each one of them runs and they're all combined at one certain point to combine to this one point into your your controller or inverter or whatever. So you take the 18 volts it still stays at 18 volts even though each one of these are 18 volts but you have to add each one of these currents. The current is amps and you essentially get 18 amps and therefore you have to increase the size of your wire. Now I was going to show you a little combination thing over here. Since most solar panel wire that you get for these off-grid systems is a 12 volt system, 12 volt panel, it's usually around 7 amps, a 10 gauge wire will easily handle that. However, when you start combining them in parallel, you have to increase the size of the wire. Now this particular all-in-one solar says that it can accept up to a 6 gauge, that's a WG gauge wire, into your, um, into the all-in-one solar unit. So, if I have two wires that are 10 gauge, it'll effectively be a 7 gauge and can handle more current if I parallel them, the wires, which is what I'm gonna do on this, this uh, thing right here because I don't have the six gauge wire, I have four gauge wire and uh, one gauge wire and effectively just 10 gauge wire to work with. So if I take two 10 gauge wires and parallel them, it'll effectively be a seven gauge wire. Now, if I did that for three of them, it effectively would make it a five gauge wire. And if I do four, it'll effectively be a four gauge wire. So you see how that works right there? And um, when I mounted on the wall over here, I created a little shelf to hold it because I don't have anybody else to help, help me hold it right now. Here's that little uh, shelf I made to hold the all-in-one converter unit. And basically it was just a one by four. Uh, and I just made a little shelf right there. And then when I could, I just put it up against the wall and I mounted it and that held the all-in-one unit so I didn't have to try to struggle to screw it into the wall.
Okay, so now I have the uh, unit attached. Screw down there, screw up there, screw on the corner's corner. Now I'm going to take off this shelf and then I'm going to explain how I'm going to wire this up. What we're going to do next. What we have here is in the back, right here. This is the line in where you can actually connect a plug for an outlet to charge your batteries with. And you have the ground, uh, the blue line and neutral, and then this is the output of line and neutral. And you would take your other ground from the one that you're going to use from the inverter and you would tie it into the ground here. So you, you tie both grounds here. And of course, the input for the AC, the output for the AC. Okay, now this is your battery connecting here. It says positive and negative. And so you attach your positive battery cable here and your negative here. Um, now one thing, I would put a switch on this so you can turn this off and on, make it easier to connect and disconnect from the batteries if you need to, um, without you know having to unscrew the wire. Um, the next part, this is some communication stuff right here. Um, this is for USB. That's for a switch. This has fuses here. You can see right here it has fuses. This is where the fuse cover is at, right here. And this is for other stuff that I'm not going to talk about right now. This is where your solar will go in. The PVN, positive, for your positive part of your solar system, and the negative. And that can hold up to like a six uh, gauge wire. These are four gauge going to your batteries. These right here can be used at 12 to 48 volts DC, just so you know that. And we're going to be running 24 volts. So that'll be my quick disconnect. Okay, so I've already pre-made these before, and I don't see any reason to redo this, but in the larger cable for the batteries, I want to be showing you how to attach one of these. But for now, um, well, I will need to make some more of these, but I'm just going to go ahead and measure this out with the distance I want from my, my uh, three-way switches right here. I'm going to go ahead and um, measure it out probably around about right there. Let's take a look at that. About eight inches. That way you're getting room to play with the boxes. So I'll cut this first one, which I also put a piece of tape on the note it as the negative. And you're going to need some tools like this to actually cut wire with. This is actually designed for this. Easily cuts through it. It cuts through the bigger wire you're going to need for the batteries also. And I'll just match it up. It's a relatively the same distance. Just snap it like that. Now this is a just regular old, uh, you know, um, wire for solar. Um, it's about 10 gauge. Okay, so next what we're going to do is with these right here that are going to connect to this unit right here. We're going to add the MC4 connector that we need. And these pins come with it. This is the connector. This is what it looks like. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add these two this piece right here that comes off to each end of this um, wire. So there we go. And we have those sitting there. And these are the two connectors. And these are the pins that go in there for the female connectors. So we're going to need two pins. Area right here. That's where you're going to crimp. So what you want to do is you want to size it up in here for your crimper. And you want the, the bit to go towards the closed area. And all I'm going to do is simply push this in here all the way and just crimp it. Like that. And Next we'll just go ahead and push this thing on, as tight as we can get it, <clears throat> push it hard, and then screw this cap on all the way. You might need some pliers to actually get it to go all the way for you, but the, in the end, this is basically what it looks like. 
and this will go on to this unit here and that will connect our other MC4, the metal connector that comes off of the uh, our solar array wiring and connect into this unit. Okay so now we're going to attach these. I've already screwed them on and basically I'm just going to tighten them down with a socket wrench. Not so hard but very snug. And there you go. So now all we're going to do is we're going to apply the cover on this and then we're going to mount it onto the wall like this. I like this up here on red. So we'll have two different solar arrays plugging into this to combine the one going into our box. Now the next video will be about the battery connections here, 4 gauge wire. And I've got some lithium iron phosphate batteries, also known as Life PO4. And they're much more stable, much more lighter than a lead acid battery. They're 23 to 25 pounds. And you can just charge them up to 90% uh, of their, their, their uh, amp hours usage. Not to mention they have a better operating range than lithium ion batteries. And especially in cold temperatures. So, Potentially they could be left outside during the winter time because they do operate at minus 20 degrees C to 60 degrees C So the next video will be about connecting the batteries and then finally we'll get to the The third part of this unit where we're going to talk about the AC out input and output and I'm going to have a control panel uh, that's a, a main breaker panel that you would actually install in a cabin if you had a cabin uh, off-grid.